like the, the king of uh, sonnets now in West Nigeria. He's the king and queen. <laughs> okay, we have one more actually. Oh, Sylvia more. Taylor, Sylvia. the award winning writer. She's been published in many anthologies, magazines. Um, let's see. Warrior, goddess, the Fisher Queen. <laughs> I'm up here and read your stuff. Thank you. <laughs> I have a confession to make, too, that the last time that I had a poem published, which was the first time I had a poem published, I was 12 years old. And uh, my mother had submitted one of my poems to the CBC National Children's Poetry um, Anthology. So um, it's only been about, I think about 10 or 15 years since then. <laughs> it's been a bit of a dry spell. <laughs> Absolutely. For coming today, it's lovely to see all your wonderful faces. And um, since we just came flying off the ferry, uh, crossing an ocean, which one normally does around here, uh, I'm going to start out the three that are in this wonderful little anthology with a piece called "The Ocean Is My Lover." The ocean is my lover, and I languish in his arms. My ears are deafened by his voice. Now soft and whispering, tiny tongue flicks of sound, hypnotic in its delicacy, reassuring, coquettish, hinting of immeasurable passions. Now wild and bestial, howling in primordial need, beyond all sensibility, demanding what is always his. And our voices sear the heavens. My eyes are blinded by his beauty, now sleek and undulous, Buddha serene, reclining on the lotus heart, shimmering, christening, reflecting the eyes of God, now wolfish and ragged, flashing his bare white ivory, reeling and lunging, shaggy haunched in the shrieking winds, and our beauty shapes the sun. My flesh is numbed by his touch. Now silken and wistful, a feather sweep of lashes, a curling spider tendril, breathy, tremulous, elfin sweet in its painful innocence, now urgent and grasping, hungry, sucking tides, dragging near, casting away, brutish and careless in his excess. And our passion ignites the moon. The ocean is my lover, and I languish in his arms. Actually, I'm very, very pleased to read the next piece called The Hungry Heart uh, because it's uh, going to be included in a wonderful project uh, for those of you who uh, know or have heard of or had the pleasure of reading Susan McCaslin's beautiful work. Uh, she and her husband and many other people in the artistic and scientific community have been fighting the good fight to save the most exquisite stand of uh, forest in uh, between Fort Langley Glen Valley. And so um, I've been, uh, and myself and my partner Keith have been very proud to be part of that experience. And um, I'm very happy to say that a very prominent person has joined that and has, I'm sure, created the tipping point. And uh, I feel very confident that that 25 acre stand of, of heaven and paradise on earth will be saved. And that man was Robert Bateman. And he not only appeared, he stopped his schedule for an entire day. He answered an email by Susan McCaslin's husband, Mark, saying, is there any way that you could cast your energy towards this project, being a tremendous wilderness you know, involvement that it has? And he stopped his entire day of touring uh, galleries across Canada, and he um, just basically walked into two TV stations and said, do me up. <laughs> and then, um, if that wasn't uh, more than enough, he asked to go out to the forest and spent two hours there. So, uh, and, and meeting with people involved in the project. So, all that to say, Susan has this incredible project called the Han Shan Project. Yes, yes. And uh, it, is, um, it comes from a, a wonderful Chinese tradition of hanging poems in the boughs of trees. 
And so in this case, uh, Susan just emailed me yesterday and said, oh, please do send it, because she's going to be taking all the poems that people contribute and hanging them in the boughs of that sacred forest. The Hungry Heart. Set for me a table within this sacred grove, where I may gorge remorseless upon this lush insanity of life, this cacophony of chlorophyll that insists on wild excess. Let me lap the honeyed summer wind, tongue lolling, eyes gone mad. Let me lick the light from virgin leaves, a heady gold ambrosia, slipped from the cup of God. And when I've eased my hungry heart, I'll burrow down, turn once, turn twice, and dream of running with the wolves through urban canyons, stark and spare. And one more at the end, just a little time left. And this is actually called Winter Harvest. And this is a piece that I wrote for my dear old dad, who passed many years ago in the winter. Winter Harvest. How many kisses did I plant on that broad, smooth plain of my father's cheek? How many seeds did I sow? row upon row, season after season, praying for a bountiful harvest, praying for the golden day. I would hold my father's love, heavy in my arms, to nourish me through the long, cold winter of his death.